Hi everyone, welcome back to Daily Fredo. Long-awaited Jubilee episode with conservative trans people featuring, for example, Blair White versus liberal trans people finally made its way to YouTube. Now, as someone who comes from a mostly conservative country and lives in another mostly conservative country, some of the prompts and the answers blew my mind. So let's watch the juiciest snippets together. It is a safety concern for trans women to share a female restroom. Can the agreeers please step forward? It no. depends. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think I think that to start it off though too is it's not necessarily saying that trans women. It all comes down to self ID. When we moved into a self ID process, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of men, just simply self IDing into being trans women to utilize the female restroom and to harm women. Or just be thing. there. Absolutely. The most bonkers thing in our times is the safe ID thing. Self-affirmation. The fact that anyone can say they are anything or anybody and the world is supposed to believe it, affirm it and accept it, it it's insane. We've seen those ridiculous videos of enormous men with beards and muscles wearing a dress and threatening everyone around to meet them outside if they don't affirm their womanhood. Well, now even this effort is not necessary. A man can simply say, yo, I'm a girl, without having to change anything about him, and he can simply access those women's spaces. And in many cases we've seen on the news, it ends horribly for the women. They're, they're getting arousal from just being there. You know, there was a photo, or it was a video, that went viral, I think like just two weeks ago, with some like whole man with a boner in the women's restroom. And there's just some poor woman filming it, like am I just supposed to like accept that this is here? So I think there's levels to it. I think that trans women who are actually trans, you know, we're talking gender dysphoria, transitions, making the effort, you know, probably once you reach a certain point in your transition where you can actually assimilate within that space and not cause a disruptance, that would probably be the ideal time to start doing that, right? Whereas, you know, a cross-dresser who is emboldened to, in this current climate, say that they're trans because now anything is trans if you say so, uh, that person should probably stay absolutely out of women's restrooms because you're there to get your rocks off and the women are there to take a, a, a poop and a pee. So it's not the same. Um, and I, you know, I really empathize with women who you know, have an issue with it. And, and I can probably hear some women commenting, well, how do I know the difference between a fetishist and a real trans person? It's hard. It's hard. However, that's the only nuance that I know to give to it, which is there's different reasons people are trans and some people really are trans because they're horny and some people are trans because they really felt that way from, you know, a young age or whatever. Well, that's a brave statement, but so real. And trans women should be on the side of women, like Blair here is. And if you are transitioning, but you still look like a guy, empathize with vulnerable women and don't go to their spaces. It will scare them or at minimum, it will make them feel uncomfortable. There are men who use the trans cover to act out their creepy sexual fantasies. They exist out there. They are everywhere, actually. And suddenly the world seems to be completely against women's safety. Where are the husbands? Where are the fathers? Why is it allowed to happen to their wives, mothers and daughters? For the girls and women in their lives to be forced to share the toilet with the dude. Can the disagreeers please step forward? I want to comment on Blair's Points. The one thing I kept hearing through all of the nuance is passability. Because ultimately, that. ultimately, when we talk about passability, it determines how you get harassed in the bathroom. Because honestly, if you don't look so passable or whatnot, people are going to say, oh, that's a man with a dress on, and then there's going to be discourse. But the reality of it is, honestly, who cares who's trans and who's cis going in the bathroom? You should be minding your own business, being able to pee and do your business in peace for the most part. That, com that um, conversation around this man with a boner on or whatever like that, I saw that picture and I thought to myself, that's really a right wing talking point and conservative propaganda because that's their ideology How is it when it, it was comes to trans. Happened. I'm speaking. That's their ideology when it comes to trans. It's because trans, I'm sorry, conservatives have a basic level understanding of what transness is in the first place. So this is Blossom. Awesome Blossom. To make things easier on me, I'll just refer to everyone in this clip however they are trying to present, which means I will refer to Blossom as she, even though I know he's a biological male. But the people in the video are referring to each other with those pronouns, so I'm not gonna cause a mess. 
Anyway, Blossom here suggests that only women on the far right have a problem with biological men using women's bathrooms. So if you're a liberal woman, you welcome guys in the toilet. This statement makes n so little sense. I also don't like her condescending attitude and I have a feeling it will just get worse. It's just about Correct. where I you're agree. able to assimilate to and where you're not. And I think one of the biggest problems in the trans community is the community by and large has seemed to reject assimilation and seems hell-bent on... That's not true. I think it's absolutely true. You see people talking about how you don't need to work on your transition at all to enter women's restrooms. And I think that that is so selfish. That drives so me crazy. It's so disregarding of women who may or may not feel uncomfortable. But the trans woman experience is not monolithic. So who are we I to police transness? Why are we policing other people's trans and how they show up? We have to to protect but we, women. But why are y'all policing though? That's what I don't understand. Right. You're using I, words that no we're policing. not using. It's not policing. We're listening to policing. women. And if you have 50%, we won't say 50%, but if you have a large chunk of the population of women saying that they are uncomfortable with a certain thing, a good person leans in and listens. So why they don't are you just not reject to it. other trans women, Blair? I, I think do that's... all day. I am okay, right so... now. See, this is why I like Blair because she is logical. She's a part of the trans community, but she prioritizes women on this particular issue because it's women who are affected by it. Blossom, on the other hand, just really wants trans people to be the victims, always, no matter what. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be combative or whatever like that. I'm just trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying, what the middle ground would be between you and I, because you said one side and that's great, but what about the side of trans women? If we're not bringing both sides into this conversation, Here's what I would say then, then it is unbalanced. Here's what I would say then, because I do understand both sides. I'm almost a decade in my transition, which means I was one time a year in, six months in, two months in. So I understand that. But I also knew at the very beginning of my transition that if I'm not at a place physically where I'm not making people feel uncomfortable, or I'm making people uncomfortable, well, then right. that's on me. That's Correct. my responsibility to make sure that I'm going places a certain way to make sure that they're comfortable. Because it's for your it was safety my also, too, right? Well, Would you also you can, say that you're safe? Well, your safety I know that plays a part. You seem to be looking at through the lens of always trans being the priority. I'm looking at it through the lens of women being the priority here. Um, there's plenty why, of situations. Why? why? I just want to know why because it's them who would that. fall victim to not actual trans women, as I said, but people posing as trans women. People who are but trans women are also victims oh, of that as well. But trans women are victims too. But trans. But trans. But trans. So annoying. Let's just agree that men posing as trans women to perv in the bathroom, toilets and changing rooms is gross. And that's why we have to understand why women don't want anyone else in those spaces. I think I see a lot of different points from everybody here. Honestly, like I can understand like how some women may feel unsafe with men in there in the restroom. Men. When I say men, I mean men. I'm not talking about trans women. So being a non-binary person that sometimes has the choice to either go into a men's restroom looking like this, looking like this. You can look at me looking no, like this. It's just interesting. I thought this was a trans debate. That's oh, what I don't thought. even. Non-binary people, non -binary people I will fall the trans, trans people. People. No, they don't. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe you could educate yourself a little bit I on think, that. I think I could educate you. And maybe then you would figure out I think I could educate you, you know, what right? the reality is I'm or sure what trans actually means. I'm sure there's a non-binary so. jubilee episode. Oh, well, because it's not a debate about who is really trans and who is not. It can be. We're talking about restrooms. As a trans non-binary person, when I go into a place that only has men's, men's and women's restrooms and I'm dressed like this, mm -hmm. my choice to go into the men's restroom at that point puts me in danger. I think anyone would be in danger dressed like this. <laughs> First of all, you don't have to look like this. You can choose not to look insane and you can choose not to go to the men's toilet while looking insane, okay? So his look aside, how is being non-binary trans now? In what world does it make sense? See, this shit is why real trans people have it so hard now. It used to be treated like a serious condition, often described as someone trapped in a wrong body. Now trans is a spectrum. You don't even have to attempt to change in any way. In our times, you can be a straight, asexual lesbian. You can be a trans non-binary gay man. You can be a pineapple and we all have to accept it is normal. Because if we don't, feelings get hurt. Okay, I wasn't going to include this next prompt, but something crazy happened and we're going to watch it together. I support the transgender military ban. I go with what the people at the top say, this is what is the most effective way to have our military. Just not General Nelly. I just really just hope that the people Nelly. at the no, top that you're referring to. No, not him. You know what I mean? Really it levels that to that, people, that too. I just really hope that the people at the top that you're referring to aren't transphobic, because let's be clear of the isms that are oh in the God. military. Man, we live that in America. Are people are Excuse allowed me, to be. Excuse me, I'm speaking. 
do not interrupt a black trans woman when she's speaking. You've interrupted me hella times. When it comes to, in, when it comes to isms. Did the interrupter just again, say, if you use are her black, skin tone to you say you couldn't black, interrupt her? If you are black and That's trans amazing. and you want to go into the military, I am quite sure that my experience <sighs> would not look the same as y'all's. And if we can't wake that up, then we're really being complicit. They don't look I don't, at your I don't race. Think, I don't think your but skin you, tone makes any difference. Well, somebody, yes, it does. No, well, but somebody, it does no, As somebody who's in the military, for you to tell a black person that is so As somebody who's something, for you to tell a person of color here, because I am, this is my experience. And this is my reality. First of all, that is so disrespectful to tell a person of color, an a black person, how they should feel. How dare you sit up okay, there and well, say no, it's disrespectful for you to tell a white person. Hold on, just you a second. Let me finish that my point. I didn't ask Green at a point. No, you no, you're being disrespectful. Rewind the tape and scream. You wanted me here and I'm here. So which which you going to? You wanted me here, so I'm here. You in particular. We just want you to calm down and speak like that. In particular, what are you talking about? It's not my fault that y'all don't understand respect. Let's You're interrupting oh my God. everything. Can you please stop, stop, stop? Okay. We're good. You need to calm down. No, you do, honey. My God, someone get a Xanax for okay. her. Oh, uh, keep, are, it, keep it cute, cute, girl. Her. Keep it real cute. Oh, bodyguard. I told you, crazy. This literally happens only in America. Making your skin tone a thing every time, no matter what, the topic at hand. The race card is the strongest one in the deck. Blossom is so condescending, she has such a repulsive attitude, it's very hard to watch. Nobody cares you're black right now, we are talking about something else, okay? Get over yourself. It's okay for minors to get top surgery. You guys waited on that? That's pretty vile. I can make sense. So I'm not a trans man, <laughs> so I don't have the experience or whatnot, but I do think that it has to be done safely. There is a process when it comes to having these types of gender affirming surgeries. Talking with your parents and then going to uh, endocrinologists and going through therapy to make sure this is right for you. People have a choice to their autonomy. Now I know that everybody does not, yep. but those that do should choose with the right medical education. Yeah. They should choose with safety and with full understanding of what is um, a benefit and what may not be a benefit. This is so disgusting. It's very hard to comment on it. I disagree with everything they said because they are implying that a minor is able to consent to something drastic like that and that's simply not true. I agree with a caveat that there does need to be some sort of process, which there is, by the way, yeah. in place. Yes. Sometimes there's a slip through. Yes, things happen because again, as I said earlier, this is a big world. But to again, negate people, the ability to walk through a door that you have walked through, I'm gonna say this again, and then close it behind you, is a little bit of a slap in the face for anybody who's seeking transition. It's impossible for minors to have a capacity to realize what will be the long-term consequences of their decisions. That's why we have some protective services in place. We have some laws that protect the minors. You know, they can't drink until a certain age. They can't have sex until a certain age. They can't do many things until they're adults. And now all of a sudden in 2023, which started earlier, but in 2023, which we are now in, we decided kids are able to consent to surgeries that they came up with. They, they want to have them, so therefore we have to perform them. They're deciding about this drastic thing. We're talking about children, again. So let's see this last person, the liberal person, response. I get maybe under 16, top surgery would be something that would possibly even make me a little uncomfortable, but I also know that I was homeless at 16, paying my own rent and uh, left my home at 16 and had to live my life as an adult very early. So I was able to make those decisions for myself, but I think it's weird that others can't seem to see that I could make a medical decision for myself when I had to physically take care of myself. It is not normal, or let me rephrase it. It should not be normal for a minor to be homeless at that age. The fact that some kids deal with adult issues doesn't mean they should or that they have capacity to do so. They usually have long-term mental issues to deal with as a direct result of that. At no point I will ever say it's okay for minors to go ahead and do this type of surgery. It's just vile and immoral. This is definitely the prompt that I am the most passionate about because I think there are few things more vile, more irresponsible, you know, dangerous than saying a child can consent to permanently removing a body part that serves an extremely important function. Absolutely agree with Blair. To me, anyone who wouldn't agree with that 
is evil or stupid. Simple as that. There is a process. Now, I have a lot of empathy for those detransitioners that have gone through the process and they are suffering. But I it's do not have just empathy for that. People. It's but not I'm, just detrans people. That's, that's what I'm just talking about in the conversation, for this particular conversation. And I understand what you're saying because you're absolutely right. There are more people Even that are Even among doing adults, that. we but, all do different things in but, our transition. Correct. Some of us want bottoms, some of us don't. Some of us want tops, some of us don't. I understand. So you but, need a, a lot of time as an adult to figure out what you want to do. But see, the thing is, though, some adults don't even understand what they want to do. Exactly. So, that's the so how thing. can a child? But see, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is what woke mind looks like. Adults can't get it together, but they expect children to be able to. Bye. Take care now. Bye bye then. I just again, I don't understand this obsession with obsession. other people's still others people's children. It's about caring it about is, kids. I got, I'm talking. Oh my god. It's oh, obsession. Get it together. I have it together. The obsession. The obsession with the conservatives about other people's kids. If it is your child, it is your choice what you do with your kid. That's not even an argument. What do you mean obsession with other people's kids? When you see something wrong being done, you call it out. If you see your neighbor's house on fire, you don't go, oh, it's not my house, I don't care. No, you call firemen and they will not ask, oh my God, why are you so obsessed with other people's houses? He should not be there at all anyway. Non-binary should not be considered under the trans umbrella. I think that the concept of a transgender umbrella is inherently an issue, right? Because when you're talking about something being as nuanced, complex, full of social dynamics, medical dynamics, so many things to be considered. When you're talking about a transsexual, you should really be specific. And this entire concept actually of transgender is relatively new. Like it came about in the 70s or 80s through queer theory when originally it was about transsexuals, which was considered a medical diagnosis, which was a medical process. And it's defined something very specific. For me, when I hear that non-binary, which if I'm to understand correctly, means that you- I think androgynous. You, right, and it means you you know, identify somewhere in between male and female. That's not what a transsexual is. The definition of a trans person is somebody whose body has been altered or somebody who identifies as a different gender whose body has been altered by right. hormones or surgery. Yep. It's the point I brought up earlier. If someone who's non-binary says they are trans, it ridicules the real, legit trans people. And there's two genders, so if you want to say you identify as a different gender, it has to be one of those two, That's which would make argument, you a transsexual yeah. if you're actually trans. I think it b makes about as much sense as saying that bisexual is under the straight umbrella. It's like, no, that's a separate thing. And I think there's beauty in being separate things. There's beauty in having your own lanes. And my concern is there's so much, clearly as we see today, really heated conversations about trans people that when you start adding in queer theory, non-binary, it just makes it muddy and the people at home, hello, don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Let's see what disagreeers say. And it's funny that you keep talking, that some people keep talking about, oh, you need to go through HRT, you need to have surgeries in order to be trans. That is all garbage. Another thing I never said, it's just so crazy. Again, I did. you're still well, interrupting you... me while I'm talking. This is the second time now. You're addressing me. This and is you... the second time now. If you can claim someone said something they didn't say, they should be able to correct you in the moment. I Do you feel, feel good now that you said what you needed to say? I feel fine. Wonderful. I'm sitting pretty, I'm fine. So, <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's like the power mm. that needs to hold me I back. I mean, you're appropriating a medical condition. That's what you're really doing. I exist. I am proof that non-binary people exist and that it is a thing. And because I'm sitting right here in front of all of you, I'm a real person. This is my experience. Sorry, it's just as yours is a trans experience. That as a trans woman, as a trans man, or as whatever. But I'm not here to belittle your experience or to tell you that you don't exist. And that's the difference between you and I, that you're trying to cancel you. And when I say you, I'm talking about conservatives. And maybe it is you, you're part of the thing. That was so cringe invalidating my experience. What the hell happened to adults? Why do you have to be a victim of something so badly and argue like an 80 year old? Another complete, I don't want to say the word lie, but I guess that's what it is about what I've said here, right? I never said you don't exist. So we can add that to the long list of things y'all have said I've said that I didn't. We know you exist, you're here, you're not fictitious, right? My point is you're different than me and I don't even think you deny that, but yet when I say it, it's an issue, right? The same way that he said he can't take that off, you can, right? It's different. At the very least, it's different. And when we have a community that there are so many categories, demi-girl, demi-boy, astrosexual, all this shit, but y'all can't fathom that maybe that would be a different category than what I am when we have such different, as you keep saying, and everyone keeps saying, experiences? It doesn't make sense. A bisexual is different than a gay man. But Blair, if we all thought logically, we wouldn't be able to indulge in victimhood. What good would that do to anybody? Can, can I ask a question? 
Yeah. I just actually want to ask you a question. What is your dysphoria? Because gender dysphoria or sex dysphoria, as I would rather call it, is an uncomfortability between my secondary sex characteristics, not just what I wear on a daily basis because masculinity and femininity doesn't have anything to do with being trans. But that is not true. You can have dysphoria without having to be dysphoric about your sex parts. But what is your you dysphoria? dysphoria? What is, what is, what about is your dysphoria? Anything. Straight cis women have dysphoria about their breast all the time. They get breast augmentation. It's not dysphoria. That doesn't mean that I'm not dysphoric about certain things. And you don't know my life. You're not in my life Well, daily. that's why I asked you a question. You don't know what I, I experience, the, the different things that I experience personally. I cannot believe that I grew up as a five-year-old little kid experiencing just crippling gender dysphoria, like horrible thoughts, struggled so much my entire life to be sitting in this room and you're explaining to her what dysphoria is. I have my experience. Yeah, it's just annoying. You don't know my life. You don't know what the f I've been through. It's the stupidest, most cliche comeback one can do, okay? Doctors are manipulating trans medical care. See, I have an interesting perspective on this. I've been out for 11 years this year. I've been on testosterone since I was 15 years old. Even looking into it, I waltzed my little ass up into that doctor's office and I left on testosterone. He gave me my first shot in the doctor's office that day. I was 15 years old. What if, I had, what if I had been wrong? What if I had been wrong? It really just is that simple. Obviously the trans agenda is real and we know that the health industry is benefiting financially like crazy. It's so insane that a 15 year old self-diagnosed walked into a doctor's office and was injected with hormones. It's bonkers. And it happens constantly. If you think about it, the same happens with any mental disorder. You could have depression, struggle with it, or anxiety. You go to a psychiatrist and five seconds later, you end up with a Xanax pres prescription. So yeah, nobody will ever convince me that there isn't any manipulation or malpractice going on for financial gain. Another thing I was never informed of, you know, when I started my hormone journey, and now it seems, you know, like common sense, but I was, you know, 20, so it's like, you know, even 20 year olds can have oversights. No one told me I had to freeze my sperm. That's crazy. So I'm years into estrogen. I reached the, the point of adulthood where you maybe meet a partner where that might be a, something you wanna do, and I learned that I can't. And it's simply because that doctor didn't care to tell me. And why, who knows, maybe it was because of money, it was easier for him or better for him to get me in and out and get that money rather than maybe a couple more appointments where I'm having to figure out, you know, how to freeze my sperm in the meantime. But a lot of these doctors are also activists. They're, they also they're... don't tell trans men that they're gonna go through menopause. Right, there's a lot of issues with trans men. Buck Angel talks about that. He uh, almost a lot died. Of issues. Yeah, like, he's he a friend died. of mine. Like, yeah. yeah. That's why there is no argument or there shouldn't be an argument for kids receiving any puberty blockers or a freaking surgery that could alter their future like that. As an adult, you think very differently. Suddenly you meet someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. Suddenly you want to have children. And because you were affirmed and mutilated at a young age, you can't. You are deprived of that. And most likely dealing with other health issues on top of that. Anyway, guys, if you'd like to see the whole debate, I'm linking it in the description. I obviously reacted here to some of the most exciting moments or outrageous ones. You can probably tell that I am heavily siding with conservatives here. Of course, Blair and Blossom were the most active participants here. I watched Blair's take on this debate and I know she had a very hard time with liberal side ganging up on her and questioning her, calling her names, even threatening her. Here is a little example of that actually. Great. I enjoyed this debate for what it was. It was quite ugly at certain points and I wish that it was all trans people on the panel because that would have been a, yeah, more appropriate and more fitting. Oh. You're um, so offensive. You're an offensive okay. person, human being. Yeah. Okay, okay, Just well so you know. I, I find a lot of things over here offensive as well. Oh yeah. wow, um, yeah you're disgusting. And I have to, I, I, trust yeah, me okay. the feeling is bye. more than mutual. <laughs> so if Blair seemed a bit on edge or maybe with a bit of an attitude at times, I can understand why. I'd be also losing my shit if most of the opponent's arguments had to do with their feelings their experience or their truth, talking about how offended they feel. It's hard to have a rational discussion when those things are in play. But as always, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree more with the liberal or conservative trans people in this debate? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, check more of them out here. And of course, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications to never miss another Daily Fredo episode. For even more content, follow me on Instagram at Daily Fredo. That's all for today. Have a good one. Some adults don't even understand what they want to do. Exactly. So, that's the kind so of how thing. can a child? But see,